Sounds of tumbling boulders reverberate against snow-capped mountains. Dust clouds form, polluting the air and stinging the eyes. Dislodging rocks to sell onto the construction industry is precarious work. But in the impoverished Pueblo Jovens of Flora Tristan and Shanchani, life is tough. These bare shanty towns emerged in 2003 when people living in small coastal communities came to seek out a better life in the city. Thousands have now settled here. Unpainted breeze block walls and corrugated tin roofs flank the desolate gravel streets. But amidst the bleak grey landscape, a little building is bringing a splash of colour and hope to the lives of the youngsters that live here. Hello, my name is Daniel Carrillo Cruz. Welcome Flora Tristan. This is my class in World Long English. This is the flag of Peru. This is the library. This is the toilet the small. This is the garden with the cactus. Oh. And this is cactus. <laughs> Flora Tristan School has been providing children in the area with a safe environment to learn English since it was built thanks to donations at the end of 2007. Between 30 and 40 boys and girls attend classes here every weekday. It's 3.15 on Friday and although the school doesn't open for another 15 minutes, already a gaggle of chattering, smiling faces are poking through the front gate. The volunteer teachers are holding one of the twice weekly meetings to discuss issues relating to school life and to allocate specific responsibilities for the following week. Finally, it's time for lessons to begin. Teacher Fanny from France is looking after the youngest kids, students aged between two and five. Even at this tender age, they are still able to pick up some basic things in English. The walls are covered with words from that strange language. In the touristic city of Arequipa, being able to speak English is a valuable skill. What's this? Around the corner in class 4, Sophie is trying to get 5 to 8 year olds to learn the words for different items of clothing. What are Kevin from the United States is working with 8 to 12 year olds. A few blocks away, Chris, also from the US, is running a lesson with a small group of young adults. After an hour it's time for the children to let off some steam and they skip down to the purpose-built playground five minutes walk away for cancha or playtime. For the first 30 minutes they have to participate in an organised activity. Today they are joining in Chase the Goose and British Bulldog. In the second half an hour they can enjoy free playtime. They dash about in ripped, filthy footwear, their families too poor to afford new shoes. Thankfully, a generous donation of 50 pairs of trainers from volunteer Chris Condas means that for a while at least, they will have decent shoes to play in. Meanwhile, two students are benefiting from the latest addition to the school, two computers. Peoples who have shown good attendance in class are rewarded with the opportunity to play English language learning games. In class two, volunteer coordinator Lee is giving student Ronnie some extra tuition to help improve his maths. Ronnie is one of a handful of kids being put forward for a scholarship scheme that will one day enable a student from this deprived neighborhood to go to university. Even though providing the kids in the community with English lessons is um, giving them an excellent skill that will be very marketable for their future, they're still in the government schools which are still substandard, which still do not provide them with opportunities to move on to university. So this idea was to say this could actually change their socioeconomic and their educational uh, and worldview opportunities by giving them a chance to um, get a quality education. Back on the playground, Kancha has just finished and youngsters are dashing back to the main gate for a glass of fresh water. There is a limited supply of water in the community, with houses having to replenish stocks from taps located around the neighbourhood. The school has its own tank, but this is broken, so volunteers have to heave heavy buckets full of water from one of the houses in the area up a steep hill back to school. 
Thirst quenched, youngsters begin their journeys back to their makeshift homes. The sights of stray dogs and giant potholes in the dirt streets are a reminder of the reality of life here. But as the sun sets on another week at Flora Tristan School, children like Esmeralda and Jennifer can at least dream of a brighter future.